Hello, in this video, I would talk about wind signaling pathway. Now, the gene WINT1 was originally named INT1 as, and it was first identified in 1982 in context of uh, a proviral DNA which was injected to, which was injected and found to be forming mammary cancer. And the WINT1 proto-oncogene encodes for a secreted cysteine-rich protein. Also, parallelly, it was found in the flies that the wingless gene, which is very important for patterning the wing of the fly, is a homolog of wing one genes in mammal. And thereby, it's, it was named as WINT, the INT and the Drosophila wingless. Now, the key component of the wind signaling pathway is the WINT ligand. Now, wind proteins bind to a homodimeric receptor complex consisting of frizzled and LRP5 or 6. Now, all the 10 mammalian frizzled receptors have 7 transmembrane domain and have large extracellular N terminal cysteine rich domain, which help in binding the wind molecule. The wind frizzle interaction is pretty promiscuous. That means a single wind ligand can bind to various wind, uh, fissile proteins. Now, in absence of wind, in absence of wind, that means the ligand, the wind signaling is absent and no target gene is transcribed. So let us look at what happens in absence of wind. So when wind is absent, there is a scaffolding protein known as axin, which serve to form as a scaffold in order to make the destruction complex, which ultimately would degrade beta catenin. The second player, and one of the most important player, is APC, or adenomatous polypros coli, so which was found in, can, uh, in context of a cancer and later found to be an important player in the wind signaling pathway. And it actually interacts with both beta catenin and axin, sort of work like an intermediate player and help the beta catenin to hold into the destruction complex and thereby phosphorylation of the beta catenin. There are other two components which are known as casein kinase 1 and GSK3 beta which are 7 threonine kinase so which phosphorylate specific N-terminal residues of beta catenin. Once beta catenin is hold into the destruction complex by APC and phosphorylated by GSK3 beta, the phosphorylated, win, phosphorylated beta catenin is a target for beta TRCP, which is a E3 ubiquitin ligase. Beta TRCP transfers ubiquitin chain to the beta catenin, and ubiquitin related beta catenin degrades via ubiquitin proteasome mediated pathway. Meanwhile, in the nucleus, the wind target genes are bound by transcription factors of TCF and LEF family. But this TCF left family transcription factor in absence of beta catenin bound to Groucho, which is a transcriptional repressor, and thereby no wind target genes could be expressed. Let us look at what happens when wind ligand bind to its fissile receptor. Wind binding to the fissile receptors leads to dimerization of LRP56 with fissile and disheveled binds to the fissile receptor which leads to instability of the destruction complex which would which would lead to release of beta catenin into the cytosol now once beta catenin is released to the cytosol and apc cannot hold beta catenin then there is no chance of beta catenin phosphorylation and thereby degradation by ubiquitin ubiquitin related uh, proteasome mediated pathway so once GSK3 beta cannot phosphorylate beta catenin, beta TRCP cannot form a ubiquitin chain on beta catenin and thereby beta catenin is not degraded. Cytosolic level of beta catenin increases. As a result, beta catenin migrates to the nucleus and interacts with, replaces Groucho and interacts with TCF left family of transcription factors. Also, it recruits CBP and BRG1 which are transcriptional activators and these give rise to wind responsive gene transcription. Now wind responsive genes 
are various types. Among them, one of the topmost candidate in the list is cyclin D1. Now, cyclin D1, along with its partner CDK4 and 6, helps in cell cycle progression from a G1 to S phase, and it is one of the most important important cyclins for cell division. Thereby, wind signaling is a overall growth pathway and help in cell division and proliferation. Now, sometimes what happens is there is a mutation in APC or sometimes a mutation in beta catenin, which leads to constitutive active wind signaling. And as a result, there is an uncontrolled proliferation and which could be dangerous and which could lead to cancer. Now, other targets of the other target genes of the wind signaling pathways include CMIC, NMIC, BCL2, which are all pro pro anti apoptotic genes and help in proliferation and survival. Now, it turns out that wind signaling is also important for formation and patterning of the hippocampus. Hippocampus, which is a seahorse shaped structure in our brain, is important for learning and memory. In absence of wind signaling, hippocampus doesn't form properly. Uh, wind, one of the important wind is wind 3A and a wind 3A null mutant mice shows aberrantly formed hippocampus. Now, in other wind signaling mutants such as LEF1 mutant, it has been seen that dented gyrus of, a, of, of the hippocampus is severely reduced and also malformed hippocampus. That means wind signaling is one of the most important player for formation and proper functioning of the hippocampus. Not only that, wind signaling helps in differentiation of the neurons. So whenever in a cultured stem cell population, wind, sig wind signaling is activated forcefully, those neuronal uh, stem cells become differentiated neurons. So that's why wind signaling could also help in differentiation of the neurons. Not only that, wind molecules or wind family molecules has been seen in several structures of the embryonic brain and it is quite evident after decade of research that wind signaling is important for patterning of the several aspects of the cortex, thalamus and hypothalamus. Recently it has been found that the anterior posterior nucleus is formed by wind signaling activity and in absence of wind signaling or uh, constitutive active wind signaling there is a spread of one structure to the another side so that is how wind signaling is very important for various aspects of brain development growth proliferation and cell division so that concludes my video on this topic so if you like my video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you